Welcome everyone. Happy Friday. It's that time of week once again for the master classes. And I believe you already, if you were around earlier, you already got to see one from Paul Tranny on, um, I believe it was graphic design. And uh, of course I'm up now doing photography. After me, I think is the daily creative challenge for Photoshop. Then Paul's up again doing a Photoshop master challenge or master class, not master challenge. And then after that will be um, Jason Levine doing audio and video. And after that will be Howard Pinsky doing UX UI design in Adobe XD. And rounding out the day will be um, Kyle Webster doing graphic or doing digital drawing of some kind. So this is Masterclass Friday. My name is Terry White. I'm the worldwide design and photography evangelist here at Adobe. And it's my pleasure to be doing photography for you guys today. Today is going to be kind of an open q and I've already got some questions queued up that came in uh, just when I posted the topic. Uh, a couple people like I'm looking at on YouTube, Mike C said he won't be able to be here, but he, you know, for the live, but he asked a question uh, in the chat, you know, or before this, before the live even kicked off. And so this is your chance to ask your Lightroom and photography questions. If you've got questions on Lightroom, I uh, got a question on just photography or even Photoshop. Now's the time to put those in the chat. Um, and speaking of the chat, for those of you who are watching this on Facebook, you're watching this on um, on YouTube, you're watching this on Twitter, you're watching this somewhere else besides Behance. I just want to point out that the only chat that I'll be able to pay attention to for your questions today is over at b.net slash Adobe Live, that one right there. So if you uh, want to hang out on the platform you're on and continue watching, that's fine. Uh, you can certainly just kick back and watch and learn all day. But um, keep in mind that the Behance chat is the one that we moderate. It's the one that I'm looking at right now, right there. It's the one I'm looking at for the questions. So if you do have a question, but you're watching somewhere else, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. Log in with your Adobe ID, which is free, of course, to make. You don't have to be a Creative Cloud member to have a have an Adobe ID. Um, anyone can have one, and you can even sign in, I believe, with your social media accounts if you don't even want to create one with your email. So lots of ways to sign in to be able to take advantage of the chat and to be able to ask questions. All right, with that said, I'm going to now, um, I'm, I'm seeing people in the chat. I see James, Sam Peterson, Rebecca, Nick, uh, J.R. Flores, Larry, uh, Ju Juamna, uh, hopefully, Juana, Juamna, Ho I'm, I'm pronouncing your name from Argentina wrong, I'm sure, but uh, give me the pronunciation and I'll get it right next time. Uh, Anika and uh, Gosta and, and Nicholas. So people from Sweden, uh, Argentina, all over the world, thanks for being here in the chat. But again, if you got questions, that's the chat that I'm going to be looking at. So. The first question that I did get prior to the stream, so it didn't have to be in that particular chat, was, and let me read it, uh, Mike, hi from Sydney, Australia. I won't be able to be uh, tune in live, uh, it's late in Sydney, Australia, I get it, uh, but we'll watch the replay. A quick question, can you please explain how I can use Lightroom Classic on two separate computers? Juan, great, thanks, I can, that one I can handle. All right, uh, so, the question, and here comes a question from uh, Jan. But anyway, Mike's question, um, how can I use Lightroom Classic on two different computers? And that question comes up a lot because we license most of Creative Cloud to allow you to use it on two different computers, but typically, you're, you're and even then, you're typically doing it one computer at a time, like home, work, school, home, work, school, whatever it happens to be, laptop, desktop. And um, Mac, Windows, whatever it happens to be, you can certainly have everything installed on two computers. But when it comes to Lightroom Classic in particular, uh, when people ask, well, how can I use that on two computers? That becomes the, uh, that becomes a, a, a difficult, I shouldn't say difficult. That becomes a question that you have to think about how Lightroom Classic works. And it can certainly be done on multiple computers. I do it. I'm, I'm on my desktop computer now, but I absolutely have Lightroom Classic on my laptop and I use it all the time on both. So um, really, it's a matter of managing two things. 
And this is something that it doesn't do automatically for you. This is why I say it's a bit more challenging. You have two aspects to Lightroom Classic. You have the application, of course, that's on both computers, no problem. You just go install that from, uh, from Creative Cloud. That's not the problem. The problem is you have two aspects. You have your catalog and you have the photos themselves. So in order to use it effectively on two computers, you would have to have access to the catalog on both computers. And unfortunately, another, another monkey wrench thrown into the, to the crux of things, or another wrench thrown into the crux of things, the um, Lightroom Classic, uh, the catalog is not designed to be used over a network. So it'd be, hey, just throw it on my NAS and then I can use it on two computers. Nope, it doesn't work that way. The, net, the catalog itself has to be on a local drive. It doesn't have to be on the internal drive, but it has to be on a drive connected to your computer. So the images though can be stored on a NAS. They can be on another computer. So here, I'm gonna show you my solution. This is not, and I repeat, you have it recorded. This is not an Adobe recommended solution. This is not an Adobe recommended solution. So if you do this and you screw it up, don't say Terry told me to do it. I absolutely did not tell you to do this. I'm just showing you what I do. So if you do go on this workflow, if you do this on your own, you're on your own if something goes wrong. Don't call Adobe and say, hey, my catalog got corrupted because I did that thing Terry said do, because Terry didn't say do it. He said, don't do it. But here's what I do, just so you get an idea. Um, and before I show you that, let me just show you the simplest solution. If you take a hard drive back and forth between the two computers with your catalog and your images on it, and you make sure this is backed up, problem solved. So. If you want to do this, we used to refer to this as sneaker net, walk, walking it back and forth between two computers. If you want to do it this way, this works. There's nothing wrong with this, and this is, a, this is a recommended solution. This will be fine. But let me show you the one that I do. All right, I'm going to switch over to my computer. And, aha, uh -huh. hang on one second, got to fix something. I just realized, hold on. I rebooted right before the stream. And by doing that, my devices got switched to different connections. All right, let's try this again. Uh, switch over to my desktop. That looks better. All right, so switch over to my desktop. And um, I've got Lightroom Classic here. Now, if I were to, and of course, it's got all the photos that I've worked on recently, including my moonshots from last night. But if I hide the catalog or hide Lightroom for a minute, let's just minimize it and let's minimize that. And let's, uh, you know what? Let's just go into Photoshop here and say hide others. And let's get that up. And let's now go to the find. I'm just getting to my desktop. Sorry about that. I didn't think I'd be doing this. Hide others. There we go. Okay. Here's my catalog. This is the folder it's in. It's, called, it, it's in a folder called TWP Catalog, and there's everything that makes your catalog work. So there's the catalog itself right there. It's about three gigs. There's the sync data because I'm syncing to the cloud. So there's uh, 913 megabytes or 911 megabytes. And then there's the previews and smart previews. And basically everything in this folder, this entire folder, sans the backups, is your catalog. So the question is, how do I make sure this folder is on both computers? And some of you may have already guessed by the little check marks here. Because I sync this folder with Dropbox. That's how I keep my catalog in both places. Now, why is this, whether it's Dropbox, Creative Cloud Files folder, um, Google Drive, I, I'm not, the, the brand of your syncing service does not matter. It's what makes this not a, it, what makes this, you have to be careful solution is because, think about it. If I put this catalog in the Dropbox folder and I sync it to both computers, great. First of all, I have to make sure these are, these are things I have to remember to do. Before I go open it on the other computer, I gotta make sure on the first computer that it was completely quit out of and it finished syncing. 
So I quit Lightroom Classic. I wait for Dropbox to finish syncing. I shut my computer down. Then I go home or go to my laptop. I boot up my laptop or, or wake it up. I got to wait for Dropbox to sync the file down. If you're not patient and you miss a step or you skip something or you forget to shut it down or you forget to let it finish syncing, the problem is you'll open up Lightroom Classic and it'll open up a different version of your catalog. And then the next time it goes to sync, you'll end up with catalog conflicts because you forgot to let it sync, you forgot to quit first, you forgot to do all these things. This is why it's not recommended. I do it because I'm careful and I still make mistakes. I still forget sometimes I forgot to quit out of it on this computer and I go open it on the laptop and then I get a conflict and I got to resolve that. Or I forget, I, I, like I end my master class and I quit out of everything and shut down because I didn't wait for it to finish syncing before I shut down. So now when I go open it on the laptop, it's not the most current one. So these are procedures you can do to get your catalog in two places. Not recommend it unless you're going to be diligent about making sure it finishes syncing in both places before you try and open it again. If you're going to be diligent about that, it works perfect. I've been doing it for years. But I have also forgot many times over those years and had to fix it. So <laughs> that's why we don't recommend it because if you call tech support, they're going to say, we never told you to put it in Dropbox anyway. So that's on you. All right. Um, now, that's, that only solves one part of the problem. You still don't have all the photos on both computers unless they're on a network drive, which mine are, or unless you put those most current photos in Dropbox as well because then those will sync to both computers as well. So it's not designed to work on two different computers. You can get it to work. The simplest would be copying it just back and forth, or not even copying it, just put it on here once. Plug this drive in, launch Lightroom, quit, shut down, take, unplug this drive, go to the other computer, plug it in, launch Lightroom, and you're good to go. You don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to sync, you don't have to do anything because the catalog is technically only in one place on an external drive. So to answer your question, Mike, <laughs> who asked me this, it's not recommended that you do this. Um, it's not recommended because it's really not just designed to work with the same catalog on both computers, but it can if you know what you're doing and if you're careful. So it's not only just knowing what you're doing, it's also a matter of being careful at the same time. Hang on, let me just close this browser window. All right. So with that said, um, I do it and I do it all day, every day, but be careful. <laughs> so I'm not telling you to do it, but if you do do it, be careful. All right. So I saw a question up here. I think it was about camera gear. Let me go back to Jan's question. All right. Question. Have you tried the DK 17 millimeter millimeter? Magnification eyepiece on your Nikon DSLR. It's quite expensive, so I need feedback before I make a purchase decision. So Jan's asking about a piece of hardware. It's called the I, I'm guessing the DK-17M magnification 1.2X eyepiece for your Nikon DSLR. It's quite expensive. I need the feedback before I make a purchase. I've never seen it. Never seen it, never touched it, never tried it. So I am I cannot give you feedback in that case. Um I've never used it. Sorry. All right, yes, this is the chat you're looking for. Um, all right, Lightroom Classic, just launch with the collection. Can I export the collection into a new folder on the desktop? Okay, so um, Murray's asking a question about Lightroom Classic and slideshows. Let me go back to Classic. I think I minimized it. Hang on. There it is. All right, so back in Classic, um, let's go to a collection because he asked specifically about a collection. So here's the one we did uh, last Friday shooting images for stock. So the 14 images in it. Okay, so in Lightroom collection, in Lightroom, do a slideshow with a collection. Okay, here's a collection. I can go to the slideshow and I can play my slideshow with my default template. Um, oh, some files are missing. I don't know why files are missing, but they should be there. All right, so um, there's my slideshow. 
Then he said, can I export the collection into a new folder on my desktop? Sure. I, I don't mean, I don't know if you meant the slideshow since you said do a slideshow and then you start talking about the collection. So in both cases, the answer is yes. So first of all, you said do a slideshow. Here's my slideshow from a collection. If you're saying, can I now export this video, this slideshow to a folder on your on your hard drive? Absolutely. You have an export video button down here behind my head in the lower left corner. So if you click export video, that will ask you where you, what size you want it. Um, so let's say I want 1080p. Where you want it, you set the desktop into a new folder. So let's make a new folder called Murray. Murray, 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 Murray C. All right, and we'll click create. And uh, we'll call this um, The Murray Show. All right, so there's my slideshow. I'm gonna export it out as a video. So that answers that question. The other question, because I, well, it answers a question. I can't tell which one you're asking. But then you said, can you export, can I export the collection into a new folder on my desktop? Sure, you can export all the photos in this collection to a new folder on your desktop. So you could say select all. And then you could say, oh, I know what was missing. The music was missing, not the, not the images. I just It just dawned on me when it gave me that missing message. Uh, export um, with preset. So let's say I use a preset called for web. You can export the originals. You, I just use a preset. So now the original photos are exporting. So these are all background processes in the upper left corner. You can see that they're exporting both at the same time. So the video is still exporting and the photos are exporting. But they're both exporting. Oh, I don't remember telling it to go to that. Ah, I didn't tell it to put it in that new folder because I used the preset. Sorry. Um, let me do that one more time. I'll do it the I'll, I'll do it without a preset. Export um, to a specific folder. Choose it. Let's go not to my web gallery folder like my collection has it. Let's go to the Murray folder and let's make a new folder called Photos. So these will be the photos from the slideshow. Choose. Uh, so that's where it's going to export them. What size do I want? Uh, JPEG, 85% quality is fine. sRGB, longest edge, 1080. Uh, only put the copyright and contact info in and show in Finder when you're done. Great. That's going to export them again. And that will put them neatly in that folder with whatever names they already had because I didn't rename them um, alongside the video that's still working. All right, so there are the 14 photos, or how many ever photos are in this folder? Yep, 14 photos that got exported, and the video is almost done, but that will be along, that will be actually outside this folder. It'll be in the main folder, and there it is. There's the video that's coming in. When it finishes, that'll be there. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Murray. All right, so it sounds, so Adobe recommends a solution. <laughs> nope, I didn't tell you anything about it. Nice try, Tim. I didn't tell you to do it. I told you not to. When, can you tell me? Okay, so Anis is asking a question, and this is more about Photoshop. So let me, I mean, you got, you got curves in Lightroom too, but I'm assuming it's a Photoshop question. Um, and I could be wrong, but I'll, exp I'll answer it either way. So the question is, how do curves work? And um, when to use each one? What do you mean by each one? Uh, you mean curves is a feature, so I, I'm not sure what you mean by each one. All right, but let's let's go in and open up a photo. Let's edit this one. So I'm in Photoshop with a photo that's opening. Should be opening. Did open? There it is. And uh, this photo I shot in Detroit a few years ago. Anyway, uh, or I was in Canada shooting across the river into Detroit. All right, so now let's um, let's take a look at curves. Image adjusts and curves, command M. That'll bring up the curves panel. Okay, so here's how it works in a nutshell. You've got presets, but let's just keep it on the default for now. You've got a histogram showing you where your data is in the photo. So the peaks are where you um, have the most data. The, sh the valleys are where you have the least data. And this goes from left to right being your shadows to your highlights and uh, going up from your shadows to your highlights. So this line represents everything from the darkest 
blackest nothing of the photo to the lightest whitest nothing of the photo and everything is in between so if i wanted to take the mid-tones the middle of the photo and make it darker i could click in the middle of the photo and drag down and the the darkest the mid-tones are getting darker the the shadows stayed where they were the highlights stayed where they were the mid-tones got darker. Same thing, if I take it up, I'm not sure why it's flickering like that, but if I take it up, my mid-tones got lighter. So if I take the left side up, then my shadows will get super, super gray and super light because shadows shouldn't be that light. If I do the same thing on the highlights, uh, if I pull that down, then my highlights are gonna get darker, darker and weirder looking because again, I'm taking them really out of their spectrum. So that is how curves works in a nutshell. And even though I just add at one point, which could be moved along the curve, you can add as many points as you want. So if I say, take this shadow area and make it a little brighter, but don't, don't make the midtones too much brighter, I can click again, add another point, bring it back down. So that's why it's called a curve, because you can make this curvy line. And that's how they work in a nutshell. Now I went straight to the curves panel you also have a curves adjustment layer so that's more non-destructive. So that would be the way I would recommend doing it. Now, to answer your other question, which again, I'm assuming you mean when to use curves. I only, this is me, this is not you, you, you do what you want. <laughs> but I personally don't use curves, I, I'll admit it. I show people how to use them. I show them what they're for. They're amazingly powerful, but I look at it, I look at curves as you had curves, you had levels, you had all these things back in the day before you had better ways to do it. So in other words, curves for the people that have grown up on them and used them for years and will always use them, great. I've grown up on them and used them for years and I hate them because they're faster, easier ways to do it. So if I were really trying to adjust the exposure in different parts of this photo, I'd go into the camera raw filter and do it because it's so much easier there. So curves, that's what they're there. They're for, and professionals use them and swear by them every single day. And if not making them does, or not using them doesn't make me a professional, then so be it. But I just, it's not that I, I can't use them. I obviously know how they work. It's just, I, for the amount of work I'm gonna put into this dialog box, I can do it easier other places because we have newer features. And back when all you had was curves, that's all you had was curves and levels. So that's my explanation of curves. Now, if I cancel out of that, I'll put the photo right back to the way it was. All right, um, going to the next question. But the lighting color was so complex. Is the white balance in one part of the image is different than that part, than a different part. Okay, so Steven's asking, any suggestions for correcting images where the lighting color was complex, so the white balance in one part of the image is different to the to than in the other part? So in other words, you have like two areas of the image based on the lighting where the white balance is off, but different, differently in both places. I, I've never seen a photo like that usually. The, the color cast is the color cast over the entire photo, so I've never had to correct white balance um, in more than one spot. But I imagine if I had to, let me let me experiment for a second since that's a new challenge. Uh, let me let me find one. Oh, I, you know what? I've got some photos that need some white balance fixing. So let's go. Let's go here. I'm sure I've got a photo in here where the white balance is off. Maybe if not this one, it's in the one before it. Probably in the one before it. Yep, probably in the one before it. Okay, one more. And let's go to Adobe Live 2019. And if it's not in here, I definitely know where I can go get it. Oh, I didn't put them in either one. Okay, let's go find it. Oh, you know what? Even easier to go find it in here. 
All right, let's go find it in Lightroom where I've got demo files uh, specifically with bad white balance. There's one. Okay, so this photo starts off with bad white balance, but it, it's already been corrected. So let me reset it. And let's reset it back to the way. Okay, so bad, bad white balance. The photo is too yellow. It's got other problems, but the photo is too yellow overall. His shirt's yellow. It should be white. Um, their skin tones are too yellow. So just bad white balance overall. So what you're asking is, let's say on the left side of the photo, it's too yellow. And on the right side of the photo, it's too blue. Um, again, I've never seen that in a, in a single photo. Um, but what I would probably do is I would look for the biggest section. So let's say you had two areas. Whichever area is the biggest, pick one. Um, then I would go fix the white balance for that area. So in this case, let's say the yellow is the biggest. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and grab my white balance eyedropper and just click on something that should be white, black, or gray, and that will fix the white balance. Now let's say it did not correct or it overstated it on the other side of the photo. Then the only thing you can do at that point is use an adjustment brush and set your adjustment brush to temperature. And again, there's nothing wrong with this, this particular photo, but I'm gonna, I'm, let's say I'm gonna put it back to yellow in part of it. Then I can go in and brush in the, the other white balance on the part of the photo that needs whatever that white balance would be. So I made it too yellow, I can make it too blue, but I can adjust the temperature on part of the photo that didn't get the adjustment from the overall white balance and dial in my white balance with temperature uh, on the part that needed it. All right, hopefully that helps. Um, next up. Dun, 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 dun. So Stevens uh, tell, saying about his workflow, I keep all my images in, in my on my OneDrive so they're available on all devices. And that's great, but keep in mind too that um, whatever your storage is, OneDrive, Dropbox, Creative Cloud, whatever it is, you've got to also have enough storage space in your plan to accommodate that many images. So I keep most of mine on a network drive, like the ones I'm done with, they're, I'm, they're finished using them, they're finished work, working on them, they've been delivered. I don't need to keep them locally. So in that case, they go on the, they go on the network drive and then only the ones I just recently shot are on my Dropbox on my local drive because they get synced. All right, what's the big difference between the two versions? Uh, uh, Juan, big difference between the two versions of what? If you mean Lightroom, I can tell you. Uh, if it's something else, let me know. Okay, it looks like someone's answering that and it's they're talking about Lightroom. So here it is in a nutshell. We've been talking about Lightroom Classic so far this morning, talk about the, the concepts of what it would take to have just to have it on two computers and um, doing some of the image correction, which I just did. The biggest difference is that, and this is the one where I, I help people when they're trying to figure out which one should they use. Lightroom Classic is for, I would sit you down and I would say, if you said, Terry, which one should I go with? I would sit you down and I would ask you, are you comfortable managing the storage and backup of all your photos all the time? And if the answer is yes, then I'd probably ask you a few more questions, but you're probably a Lightroom Classic person. Meaning that, um, how many images do I have in here these days? I've got 249,788 images in my Lightroom Classic catalog. So uh, about a quarter million images. And um, if something happened to my drives, to my backups, to my whatever, those quarter million images would be gone and there's nothing Adobe can do about it. If that doesn't scare you, then you're most likely a classic person because that means that you're, you're diligent, I wouldn't even say competent, you're diligent enough to not only know where all your images are, but to keep them backed up. And so that if catastrophe happened, that network drive downstairs died, my house flooded, um, fire, whatever, theft, whatever, I would be able to get those images back. So that typically means for most people I recommend, if, if your images 
you would need to have your images in at least three places at all times. Locally on your drives that you're working on, maybe a backup also in the same house or office, and then an outside, outside your environment backup, network backup, cloud backup, whatever it is, outside your home. So that could be you taking a backup drive to the safe deposit box at the bank once a week, whatever that backup is, so that if something happened catastrophe wise in your home, you would still be able to go get your images. So if that's not you, then you should probably look at the other Lightroom. So Lightroom, oh, so there's LRC, Lightroom Classic, which has been around for 14 years and has all the features. That It was the first Lightroom. Lightroom LR is the newer version. This is the version for, I don't know where my Lightroom is. Is it also minimized? Maybe. Yep, there it is. It's minimized too. Um, LR is the newer version that is all cloud-based storage and backup. So I'm still running the desktop client on my computer, but every one of my images, all how many ever there are, 54,000 of these images are, and most of those are, are smart previews. So, but all the 54,000, whichever ones are the originals that were in here are all backed up. Also, this version is definitely much easier for working on multiple computers because all I need is the application. As soon as I install the application and sign in with my Adobe ID, all 54,000 images are there and available for me. So it's, this is the version for the person that says, I don't wanna be bothered with storage and backup. I'm not good at that. I'm horrible at organization. I don't know where anything is. I'm constantly losing things. I have duplicates. I have all this. If that's you, nothing wrong with that. It's just not your strong suit then this version is most likely for you. And also, um, because you're, you know, every, the minute you import images, they're synced up when you have an internet connection and backed up to the cloud. And therefore, if this drive, this hard drive, this house, whatever, crashed and burned, heaven forbid, I would just get a new computer, install Lightroom on it, and all my images would be there. That sounds good to you? Then this version is probably more apt to what you would need. Now, there are also functional differences between the two. There's cost involved in this version because it is cloud-based backup and storage. So you get one terabyte with the plan that you start off with. If you need more than a terabyte of backup storage, it's going to cost you more money a month. So it, it really just depends on which person you are. So Juan, hopefully that answers that for you. Um, why do you get green? So Richard's asking, hello, why do you get green dots on an image? Uh, you got to give me more than that. I don't know what you mean by green dots. So what do you mean by green dots? Give me more info. Green dots where? On what kind of images? All your images? Some images? Sometimes? Like, are you talking about uh, on the on the actual file itself or on the image that you visibly see green dots? Give me more information and I'll be happy to answer that, Richard. All right. Um, best workflow for using an iPad and then syncing with Lightroom Classic um, for working afterwards. The images after sync have the adjustments from the cloud, and then I will use the feature in Lightroom Classic. Okay, fair enough. Um, let me, I have Lightroom on my iPad sitting right here. I'm just thinking of an image to work on. <laughs> All right, we'll pick this one. Okay, uh, let me switch over to the iPad first. So here is Lightroom running on my iPad, and it's synced. And if I go um, up to the upper right-hand corner and click on the cloud, it will give me the current status, and it says synced and backed up. So that means that on my iPad, it currently sees everything, all those 54,000 images in the cloud. Matter of fact, the number's in the upper left corner, so it says sees the same number of images. All the edits have been synced, everything's synced. Done, okay. Now, I go to one of these images, and I go to my editing, and I start working on it. I'm gonna make some drastic changes just so we can see the difference. So that one's light blue, and a blue, light blue sky and orange um, name for the, for the sign and so forth and so on. So I'm gonna make some drastic changes here. 
So first and foremost, let's go into effects. Let's bring down the dehaze. Or, sorry, bring up the dehaze, not down. Uh, bring up the dehaze and let's go into my adjustment brush. And I want to go into, um, yep, add an adjustment brush. There we go. And I'm going to go in and bump up the size. There we go. And I'm just going to paint over all of this. Okay, now that I got that painted over, I'm going to go into my color. And I'm going to really crank up the saturation. Or you know what? I'm going to take the saturation down. I'm going to take the orange out of it. All right, great. That way I'm just, again, trying to make drastic differences. So I'm taking the orange out of everything that I painted, or well, the color completely, out of everything I painted on. Okay, great. Now we can see those differences. Now, as soon as I hit done, now, in other words, Lightroom doesn't try and sync anything until I'm finished with the edit. As soon as I hit done and get out of it, the cloud will sync the metadata changes, and it was, it was pretty quick, so it's done. It's out of it. And now that one has been edited next to the one that hasn't been edited. First and foremost, that image was import. Let's say it was imported directly on my iPad. Therefore, it's the full resolution. It's been backed up. It's been synced and it's in the cloud with the edit non-destructive. Now in Lightroom, not classic. If I go back to my desktop, if I go back to all photos, and I scroll and find that image. There it is. It's already done. Here it is. I'm already on my computer. The change got synced up. But that's not what you asked. You asked specifically about Lightroom Classic. But I'm just letting people know um, this workflow with LR is that's it's it's golden for this kind of work because what, no matter where you start it with your original high res raw file iPad, iPhone, Android phone, or desktop computer, and whatever changes you make are made no matter where you make them across the board. However, with Lightroom Classic, let's go back to Classic. The first thing we need to think about is your preferences. So well, actually, and before we even get to that, first thing you need to do is turn on syncing in the upper right-hand corner. It moved, it used to be in the left corner, now it's in the upper right corner. Notice I have a green check mark saying that it's synced so far. So you turn it on here, it's off by default. Second thing you need to do is in your preferences for um, syncing, you need to designate the folder, which is right here. You need to choose a folder on whatever drive you want for any images that you imported or shot or did anything in Lightroom Cloud that are gonna sync down to this computer. So where are they gonna go? What folder is it gonna store these high-res originals that you shot with your DSLR, your mirrorless, your iPhone, whatever it is? So I picked a folder on Dropbox called Lightroom Ecosystem. Now, if I were to just go to my all photos, and scroll all the way up to the top, I see the same ones. And if I scroll down and find that Ponce Market, there are some of them. Am I missing that one? There it is. It's done. So it's already done the same adjustments. It's already added, um, if I go to my, uh, my um, dehaze, it's already added that amount of dehaze. And if I go to my adjustment brush and click on that uh, adjustment, that's where I paint it. It's all there. So there isn't really anything extra you have to do in Lightroom Classic other than turning on the syncing and telling it where you want your images to be stored if they're coming down from the cloud. In other words, they never existed in Classic. And then the only other workflow would be, since you're a Classic user, chances are you're importing your images directly into Classic. Okay, and if that's the case, 
Uh, for example, these images we shot for stock, these were imported into Classic, not into LR. These were imported into LRC. So if I want these on my iPad to be able to work on and edit and come back to, then I've got to do, I've got to take the initiative step in Lightroom Classic to sync this collection, which is over here on the left-hand side, at clicking this little checkbox. See how some of them don't have a checkbox, like that one doesn't, Iceland Spark. So clicking the little sync symbol into the box tells it to sync these 14 photos up to the cloud as smart previews. That's the one disadvantage. Lightroom Classic cannot sync your high-res images to the cloud. It only syncs smart preview size. So 2,500 pixels on the longest edge. All right, so now those images and that album or collection has been synced. So if I go back to my iPad and I go into that same place where I put it, I think I put it in here and I think I put it in the Photography Masterclass and there it is, Shoot for Stock. Same 14 images. And I now go make an adjustment to one of them. Let's say we adjust this one and we want to change the piggy's mask. So we go to color and we go to color. Actually, no, let's do it this way. Let's do it on an adjustment and adjustment brush and same thing. <laughs> Too big. Hang on. Do let me take the brush size of my brush. Let me undo again. There we go. And let me take the size of my brush way down. All right. And I'm right now I'm just masking the 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 mask. <laughs> and then we'll go to color. And we'll use the uh the new uh dynamic hue to change the color of the mask. So we'll make it a different color, like purple or pink or red or green or whatever color you want it to be. I kind of like the purple. All right, so now I'm done. And I get out of it. And Lightroom says, okay, I've already synced the metadata and now we go back to classic and we just wait for that to happen in classic and it already did there it is so again no matter which direction you started in i started that photo in lightroom classic as a as a tethered raw file from my nikon it's a .nef put it in a collection told it to sync that collection that collection instantly became available on all my other LR devices, iPad, phone, desktop. Make any changes in LR, since they're just metadata, non-destructive, they automatically sync up and come back down to Lightroom Classic. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So hopefully that answers that question um, in great detail for Lewis. All right, Robert's got a different question. Uh, this kind of goes back to your question I asked about workflow in terms of making multiple copies on hard drives after I move them off my CPU's hard drive. Robert, you gotta ask me the whole thing. <laughs> I'm not, I don't remember. Um, uh, so is that in conjunction with the r r green dot? So what Robert's saying is, hi, this kind of goes back to the question I asked about, asked you about workflow in terms of making mul making copies on the hard drive after I move them off my CPU's hard drive. Uh, give me the whole question. Don't, don't ask it in pieces. Give me the whole question. That way I can answer it because I'm trying to piece together in my mind what you're talking about. Ask me the whole thing. I'll be happy to try and answer it. All right. Um, Nope. Okay, we did that. CC syncing won't work. Reverb mic, CC syncing and classic will not work for originals. No, it will not. Not to mention, CC syncing and classic only works with one catalog at a time. So what is, what's going to be on the other computer? It's got to be the same catalog. Otherwise, it will never see what you synced anyway. Um, now, if you meant Lightroom LR syncing, yes, that would work. All right. Catalogs are on multiple external drives. Robert, what happens when catalogs are on multiple external hard drives? I, I, I don't know what you mean. Like, 
you plug in the drive you want to work on that catalog. I, 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 other than that, I'm not sure if I get the, maybe I'm not getting the question. Um, your catalogs, if you have more than one catalog, they can be theoretically on multiple drives. Whichever one you want to work on, that's again something you'd have to keep track of is which catalogs on which drive and plug that drive in to work on that catalog. That's another reason why I'm a one catalog person. I never have to think about where is my other catalogs because I'm only working with one. So as long as I keep track of that one, keep that one back up, I'm good to go. All right. All right, Jan, let us know. You said you're going to purchase it and think for the best. Are you looking at the IP because you work on it? Oh, that's a question for Jan. Okay, so now David's asking, can you explain how curves work when you use one, each one, whites and colors? Same way. So I was working on RGB. If you want to adjust individual colors, it will be the same thing. If I want to adjust the greens in the image, I switch to greens, it's going to give me the histogram. It's going to show me where the greens are in the image, and I will adjust the greens with the same, same um, uh, paths. Same concept, whether it's individual colors, whites, tones, RGB, it's curves. This, uh, so exactly the same thing I showed you. Just imagine if you were working on just one specific color or one specific set of colors. No different. All right. And Tim just gave you a tip on working with the curves adjustment layer in luminosity mode. That way you don't saturate the colors too much. That is a good tip. Terry, in Lightroom, is there a way to identify files in the catalog directly, directory structure that aren't in my catalog? So Dan's saying, in Lightroom, since you said catalog, you mean classic, is there a way to identify files in my catalog's directory structure that aren't yet in my catalog? I assume you mean by files images. So you're looking at a folder of images and you want to know if they've been added to your catalog or not. There is no way that I know of that it would know other than if you tried to import them again and they're in the same place as they were before. It won't let you because if you say don't allow duplicates. So it will great. Let's say, okay, for example, let's say you import a folder that had 300 images in it. And those in, and same folder, those images are there now. And then you go to that same folder and, you know, two days later and add 30 images. Now, when you go to import that folder now that has 330 images, 300 of them should be grayed out because they've already been imported. Only the 30 new ones should show up as being able to be imported because by default, Lightroom doesn't allow you to import duplicates of the same name, same location, same everything. Now, if they've been, you know, moved around and renamed and all that, then all bets are off. But if you're talking about the same directory, same folder, it should not allow you. But there's no way to look at it and say, oh, these 10 are not there, these 15 are. It, you would have to either import them again or sync that folder again. So by the way, one way um, one way you can do this inside of Lightroom Classic, if you go to a folder, not a collection, a folder, and you, uh, so there's, there's a folder here of 117 images. Let me show it in the finder. That way we, we will know what we're talking about. So show in finder. And there it is. So in this editorial folder, there's 117 images in it. Now, if I were to now, I'm now monkeying around outside of, of you know, I'm screwing around outside of Lightroom Classic, and I'm, I'm now going to take some images and throw them in that folder. Yep. So now it's the, what is it, 120, because I just added three more JPEGs that were not there. If I go back to Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Classic still says, hey, you know, there's 117 in that editorial folder. I don't know what you're talking about. And in that editorial folder, I was shooting some editorial images for stock, including some KFC. And as soon as our thumbnails show, we'll see some others. Okay, so how would I tell Lightroom Classic that 
I know I've added some more photos since you last looked. Well, you can right click on that folder and there's something called synchronize folder. It's right here above my head, synchronize folder. If I choose synchronize folder, that tells Lightroom to go back out and look and it says, oh, there are three new ones in there. Do you want to import them or not? And it brings up the import dialog box just like it normally would. And you can see the three new photos. But other than those solutions, I don't know of any way of it knowing just by looking at it. Um, you would have to try and import them again if I understand your question correctly. All right. And let's jump out of that. Okay, so next up. Boy, the jokes here, sometimes it's hard to tell what's a real question. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Reading through all your stuff. We got like four minutes left. Let me see if I can get a couple more in here. Okay, so Alina's asking, um, wait, wait, wait. Okay, Alina's asking, uh, how to do high key and low key portraits on the fly, not in studio. I have a Canon 5D Mark IV and Canon 70 to 200. Please explain the settings and equipment you need. Well, in order to do high key, you need light. So um, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna need light. So you're gonna need two lights at least because if you want high key, you're gonna want a light behind your subject. And you're gonna want a light in front of your subject. Um, doesn't matter, they could be speed lights, but you're gonna want soft, at least a soft box or something, umbrella or something big enough to be behind your subject so that it's bigger than your subject. In other words, that's gonna give you a true high key. And what really a high key is, is just that bright, even light behind your subject as the background. So for example, these, these uh, images we're looking at now, these were high key. Uh, if I were, I don't know if I have the setup, hang on, let me go look and see if I have the setup shot so I can show it to you. And, and you can do it on the cheap. You don't need anything really super expensive, but you want, uh, you want a main light and you want a, a light behind your subject to get that high key look. So here's, here's one. So let me go back to the iPad. So notice the, on the, uh, now I'm shooting down, so this one isn't necessarily going to be, you know, it's high key, but it's, it's just because it's reflected off the acrylic top on the table. But notice that soft box behind the camera. That's normally what my subject would be positioned against. So I get that nice, even white light behind the subject. And again, that light doesn't have to be anything special. It just needs to be bright enough to uh, give you that high key effect. And then if you want a main light to eliminate your subject from the front. So you're gonna need two lights, a way to trigger both those lights from on top of your camera. Um, they could be speed lights. They could be, you could do the whole thing for a couple hundred bucks. But just keep in mind that, well, I say that soft boxes are probably gonna cost you a little more than that or umbrellas or something. So let's say $300, $400 by the time you're all done outfitting the two lights one, especially with a big enough softbox to fit behind the subjects. So that would be the way I would do it. Um, if you're trying to take it on the go, of course, lighter the equipment, the better. Um, but two lights, triggers, softbox, at least one big softbox, and that should do it. Do I, uh, David's asking, do I have any, this will probably be the last question. Do I have any tips to speed up Lightroom performance? Um, sure. Um, optimize your catalog, first and foremost, that'd be tip number one under the file menu. If, and again, I'm assuming you mean Lightroom Classic Performance. So optimize your catalog. Um, build previews for the images you're going to be using on a regular basis so they load faster and load uh, quicker as, you, as you're zipping through the thumbnails and zipping through the full size images, I should say. 
Um, there is a preference in Lightroom for, here if we go to preferences, if we go to performance, there we go. There's a preference for the camera raw setting cache. It's usually on a low number, so the recommend, oh, sorry, you're not seeing my screen. In the preferences, there's a uh, Lightroom uh, cache for the camera raw. That's normally on a low number. You want to set that to at least 20 or higher, 20 gigabytes or higher to give it enough space and room to run. Fast graphics card always helps. Um, SSD drive, nice fast drive with plenty of space on it for room. Those are all the things that will make Lightroom faster. Now, there are, other, there are other ways to do it, and I think Scott Kelby, as a matter of fact, just wrote a blog post on five tips for speeding up Lightroom over at lightroomkillertips.com. So if you head over there, you can uh, check out Lightroom articles, but there was one he, I know he just did recently on that very question, five ways to speed up Lightroom. All right. Uh, we're gonna see how can I get a dark background around the flower image taken in daylight. All right. Um, I'm out of time. Barry, uh, send me that one offline. I'll see if I can answer it. He's asking about um, in Lightroom Classic, how do I get a dark background around a flower image taken in daylight? Um, I'd have to see it, but there, there are certainly ways to do that. Uh, but depends on. But I'm out of time. I'll let you guys go anyway. Uh, ping, ping me later.